You might notice that I'm wearing the same clothes that I was in the last video. That's because it was filmed the same day. Yeah. So, today it's all about letting go of the things that you thought would be. The things that, oh, well, you know, I thought I was going to be doing this by now, and this thing came along and fouled it all up. Well, it's a necessary process, and if you find that I'm a bit too chipper for the subject at hand, I do apologize. I, um, I'm in a very, I'm a happy chappy and cannot help myself. I'm just feeling the joy, but, um, that's another thing that can come when it comes down to chronic illness. One of the biggest things is that you have to let go of a few things because first you have to fight and you have to find your feet and sometimes it can be so complicated. And um, one of the biggest way I let go was learning to laugh and Gallo's humor was definitely necessary. So, anyway, um, I'm not an expert by any means. I did major in psychology at one point, which means I'm probably the least qualified person ever. Uh, I apologize to psychology majors and <laughs> therapists at this moment in time. Um, but anyway, Hold on tight. Letting go of control. It was actually assigned to me, well, kind of, uh, reading material. And I had a bit of a chuckle. Almost fell off the couch laughing. Yeah. Um, because I've met me and I live with myself. <laughs> so I know myself. Um, yeah. So let's bring it on back. Um, when you're diagnosed with many conditions, uh, I think all of them really, especially the chronic conditions and some and the neurological conditions. One of the first things you're thinking is, I don't know what this is, but I'm scared. And can we make this stop? Followed later on by, okay, I think we've made the stop. Which, you know, control, needing to feel like you are the person pulling the string, um, feeling like you are the person who is responsible if anything goes haywire. <sighs> Sometimes yeah, it can be really, really tough. Um, and you hear all the trite phrases like, let go and let God, and let it be. And while that is one of my favorite Beatles songs, oof, yeah, it's trite. And it's, you haven't given me the how. I mean, how does one let go? How does one just give up the need for control. Well, it depends on, I mean, I need to have control of myself. If someone acts like a massive jerk, I might need to control myself so I don't say something very, very foul, like, oh my, you massive twatopotamus. And avoid going off on them completely. Although I admit, um, 
that isn't always easy and I had to really fight for my temper to the point now where sometimes I let things go or kind of go past me because I don't want to be angry because I don't like the feeling or I uh, try to avoid anything that might cause anger and I try to avoid fights. Um, and I, that's another thing that I am letting go of. Uh, sometimes it's necessary. It just depends on which battle you're picking and how you're picking that battle. Uh, I'm not saying go out and if someone acts like a big jerk in the middle of Walmart or doesn't have their nose tucked into their mask, seriously, tuck him in, he'll get chilly. You don't call them a twatopotamus or <clears throat> tell them that they're spreading germs and that and, and or call them typhoid Mary COVID Mary COVID Kara <sighs> so, um, on the other hand if someone does something that you find inappropriate and you feel is wrong it's okay to say hey I feel that like that's wrong sometimes letting go of the bad habits um, like being negative towards yourself and yes feel free to come to me at me on this just be gentle if because, but yeah, um, <sighs> being negative and focusing on just one aspect, just remember, um, your idiosyncrasies don't make you you, but they are part of you. Uh, but there's so much good and all of that but don't if you need to talk about your illness do so especially if you're the kind of person who holds things back until finally it explodes and it's terrible um, and uh, yeah don't hold back but part of letting go I think is finding the positive in that, and that can take a while. Uh, I am not saying that it's going to be instantaneous. I'm not going to say that you're not going to have a moment where things come crashing back. And I'm not going to say that this is simple, or that I understand it yet, or that I ever will. But I am saying that it can be helpful. I um, am realizing that it sounds like I'm asking a question at the end of every sentence and um, it's a bit weird yeah um, anyway but it can be helpful and it's okay uh, you need to care for you. Your body is exhausted. You need the rest. Don't worry about everyone and everything. Just worry about giving yourself that little break that you might need. Get the rest that you need and if you can't, please consult your doctor. Do not say pick up a bottle of melatonin or valerian root. Just because remember that a lot of medications can can also affect the way that your anti-seizure medication can work. So please contact your doctor first and say, I cannot sleep very well. I really, really don't want to be on a sleeping medication. Uh, 
what what do you think about melatonin? What do you think about valerian root? I wouldn't suggest taking them together. And please watch uh, how things might mix together. Uh, I cannot tell you to do this thing or that thing. I cannot tell you what works for me because it would be grossly inappropriate. But I can tell you that if you feel like you need a supplement, please contact, contact your doctor. Okay, so to everyone else, because I'm recording this for everyone, I think sometimes there are things that you let go of and that really, really sucks. Mm, big time. Wow, I'm doing Mr. DiMartino eyeball. Uh, you know, that, that one teacher from Daria who shouts a lot and whose eyeball does this. More than ever. Okay. I... <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, so it can suck seriously at let go of certain things, but sometimes the things that come to us when we are free for them can be so much better. And then we're just like, why, why did we have such a hard time with that? You know, it was terrible for us or that just didn't work. Why did I have such a hard time letting go and I could have missed this thing and I realized that it sounds like I'm making a try. I realized that it sounds like I'm giving, uh, sorry, I, I, I can't English today. I'm very happy, I'm a happy chatty, but I can't English today. It sounds like all I'm doing is giving you hallmark philosophy when everything is essentially poetry written in nuptial font point twenty point sixty three, give or take, on cardstock with a picture of a mouse in a wedding veil, but <laughs> don't worry, the sun is going to shine again tomorrow. But as someone who has fought to get past the point of, what is this? Make this stop. Oh, make it stop. To still struggling and still work looking for that still struggling and still looking for answers and still wanting things to be slightly different yeah yeah um but a lot more, a lot better than I was, and a lot stronger. And from what I'm told, uh, is uh, that I really considered, considering where I was in 2004, when I was first diagnosed, and considering where I am now, just a million times improvement. And I'm just gonna give you the immortal words of my friend Dudski. I have a lot of friends named Dudski. It's my version of Joe Blow or uh, John Doe. But my friend Dudski has always been fond of the phrase, don't be sad, be awesome. And I'm gonna pass that on. So I'm gonna be your Dudski and or what I hope, um, your fun big sister. Don't be sad, be awesome, and for now, just live, enjoy uh, things like, even if it's ice cream, you know, go and get some really good ice cream, 
maybe even the expensive stuff, uh, I highly recommend. I think I can't, I, I, I'm not being sponsored by the way. I highly recommend Magnum Double Chocolate Bars. I'm not being sponsored. Just putting it out there. They're really good. Anyway, uh, love you to bits. You take care of you. And yeah, I know this is longer than 80 double hockey sticks. Nanette.